another favorite of mine. Um, I actually touted this one, and this is going to be kind of stabbing myself in the back a little bit. Um, last offseason, I said that Nico Cavadas would overtake Tristan Cassis. I said it <laughs> multiple times. I said Nico Cavadas is going to be Boston's first baseman no matter what. Cassis just doesn't have it. I was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but we got Nico Cap. We got Nico Cavados, a 25 year old. He it was drafted in 2021 by the Boston Red Sox, round 11, pick 316 overall out of Notre Dame. He was born 102798 in South Bend, Indiana. He had a rough year. Let's not let, let's not kid ourselves. I I have a lot of hope for Cavados, but he. He had a tough year, strikes out way too much. He struck out 172 times and 369 at bats between double A and triple A this year. It's it's flat out too much. His average was only 206 on base percentage, 377. He does like to walk. He he can take a walk, but I this profile screaming at me, swing the bat, man. You're looking at way too many pitches. Swing the bat. He's looking like a three true outcome hitter at this point. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. He's either going to walk, he's going to strike out, or he's going to hit a bomb. The power is there. That's yep. the good news. Um, the power is legitimate. It's there. This guy was a bit of a scout the stat line controversy to the point last year, to the point of where we were even worried about promoting him too much because he was rising up our leaderboards and we just weren't, we weren't feeling it that by, by we, I mean the people that were the developers behind scout stat line peak projections, you know, and, and we were worried about how that might reflect on us. So while we have a lot of those guys that we're really pushing that are rising up our leaderboards, sometimes we see a guy that's rising up and we're like, I, you know, I don't agree. You know, I don't agree with the machine right now. And I'm afraid it's going to give us, you know, a a negative reputation or something like that. Um, I think these things all play out over time. And I think that that's what we've seen with Kavadas. I think he's corrected and he's in a more appropriate place right now. But I think we started seeing what we were worried about with him last year, this year. And and this strikes true going back to his college years. Didn't hit for much average for college anyway, but he did get on base and he hit for power, especially that final year there. And we saw that a little bit last year. I mean, he was just mashing early on, but then as he started moving up levels and started facing higher level competition, the holes in the the swing or whatever it is started appearing a little bit more frequently. And now we see him in the highest levels of the minors, which is great. Good on him for getting there. Uh, But you're going to have to hit more than 206 in double A and triple A in order to find much success in the major leagues. Uh, He's going to have to hit for more power if he's going to be a successful major leaguer. That's, that's my view on it, but he does walk. He does hit for power, so not all is lost. There's just a healthy dose of skepticism here. Yeah. Yeah. And he's not going to be a No, no, he's not. Not not at this point. Um, I, I like once you once again, like you said, I think the power is there. It's fine. Um the the fact of the matter is you can't strike at 40. 42 percent of the time give or take i don't know what the exact numbers is but i'm not a mathematician but it's it's above 42 percent that he's striking out um at the time can't do it a lot of strikeouts Uh, you you, i mean at, at this point looking at that you're not a major leaguer let's see i'm i'm calculating it out right now 36 percent 36% 36% okay. of his plate appearances on the year he struck out. Can't do it. it, it you not- cannot be a major leaguer. It, and he's, you know, just in, in AAA striking at 36% of the time. Can't do it. 
Yeah, I mean, you think of the major leaguers that do that. You you have very few that are real successful, and we can't even really talk about Joey Gallo anymore. Yeah, because he was one of those guys. Now he's, you know, he's fringe. And and there there's the other question is, well, how long does it last? He he had a good stretch when he was yeah. doing it, but striking out near forty percent of the time was hitting for more power than Cavadas is you got to be a legitimate 40 home run guy to be successful with those kind of strikeout levels. And I'm not seeing, I, well, the power is legit. I I'm not seeing that level of power. Yeah. Yeah. So I agree. You gotta change your approach a little bit, dude. I, I, I will throw another little sidebar out there. He's still on my team and I'm holding. <laughs> Yeah, but I, I mean, am you not can't but, call sell high, right? Like he, I guess he was a sell high last year, right? Yeah. But <laughs> I don't know if uh, we really gotten that much out of him last year, yeah. anyway. So, but my recommendation now is th- this: you, you don't want to be anywhere in anywhere near this profile. I, I apologize to Nico Cavadas. Um, I gave you uh, all the the juice I could give you last year. I, I can't do it now. I don't want to be next to this profile, but I'm stuck. Uh, that, that's my word of advice. I, 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 I would, th- this is a complete, you can watch it if you want to, but there it is. All right. I'm on Does board. He have a comp? Does he have a comp? What's his comp? Matt Dominguez. Oh, yeah. We just talked about Matt Dominguez with Nathan Martorella. Yeah. Not much to rehash there. Um, he showed some power, but not not a great profile to to comp. I don't think. Yeah. yeah. 